Power Stone, a 3D fighting game that's often compared to as a 3D Super Smash Bros. But I think that's unfair to the series. To me, Smash Bros. is a 2D platform fighter, where you fight to knock off foes off the stage, while Power Stone is what you call a 3D arena fighter, where you go head-to-head -head against your opponents to knock them out using the terrain to your advantage. Though it's been a few years since Power Stone 2, Capcom hasn't made a new title in this criminally underrated series. While the only recognition I can find, or even a cameo, is the main character, Falcon's Plane, appearing in Street Fighter V. Well fine, if Capcom won't make a new Power Stone game, let's see if any other video game companies made any Power Stone inspired games. You may even say Power Stone clones. Now some people may not believe it, but there actually are a good handful of games that play almost exactly like Power Stone in some way or form. Some people would also believe it's not as recognizable as something like, you know, any of other Capcom's massively underutilized library, that nobody would think of making one. But today, I'm actually going to show you 10 whole games that not only play like Power Stone, but might be just as good. And surprisingly enough, there are actually a few more games I missed out on when making this video, including Shrek Super Slam and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So if this video does well, I may make another one. And the best way to do that is to make sure to like and subscribe to ring the bell for notifications. But with that out of the way, let's begin with our first game about a very grim cartoon. I'm clearly talking about the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. Yeah, Billy and Mandy got a console video game, and it's a Power Stone clone of all things, released on autumn of 2006 on multiple platforms, including the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, the Nintendo Wii, and the GameCube version which we'll be playing. The game was developed by High Voltage Software, the same developer who made Stitch Experiment 626, if you haven't seen my Lilo and Stitch games video, and the publisher was Midway. Now believe it or not, Cartoon Network and Midway were actually really good partners during the 2000s, helping also make games like Ed and Eddie The Misadventures, and there was also plans to make a Dexter's Lab game where it was giant mecha fights. Unfortunately, that never came to be. Now when it comes to all these Power Stone clones, I'm not really going to talk about the gameplay whatsoever. Mostly because it's a Power Stone clone, so it would play like Power Stone. So basically, it's a 3D arena featuring two or more characters duking it out. Though I will explain how similar they are to specific Power Stones, like if it's Power Stone 1, which is only 1v1, or Power Stone 2, where it's a free-for-all. And believe it or not, this game also has a story. Obviously being based off the Cartoon Network show of the same name, the game revolves around Billy, Mandy, and the Grim Reaper himself. Three unnatural friends who are caught in supernatural oddities. Also, Erwin is here. In the game, Billy releases mystical orbs called Bad Mojo, causing havoc all over Ensville. And it's up to Billy, Mandy, Grimm, and Erwin to beat the snot out of their friends and foes. The gameplay is entirely inspired by Power Stone 2, as you can start from one part of the arena and it changes into a chase arena, leading to another type of the arena where everything completely changes and is super crazy. So it has an arcade style of gameplay that Power Stone is pretty well known for, and could even possibly be a good stepping stone for a Power Stone 3. As mentioned before, the levels change over time, but you can set up how everything plays with the game. Not just game modes or what characters you can play as with alternate costumes, a lot of which are your favorite characters from the show, though I am a little disappointed that characters like Jeff the Spider and Mindy weren't playable. But that's only a nitpick when you have 25 playable characters in the roster, and 20 of which have two different alternate costumes. Not to mention there's tons of cool unlockable content, like some concept art you unlock in the game are original concepts of the show as well as art from Underfist, the finale of the Grim Adventures of Billy and Andy series, two years before it airs on Cartoon Network. Also, Weird Al Yankovic is the announcer in the game. Player 2 needs ham battle. Am I the only one who finds that really interesting? But in short, if you're looking for a faithful take on the Power Stone series, or if you want to have a fun Billy and Mandy beat-em-up game, I highly recommend The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy on whatever console you can find it. Well, we're starting off pretty strong, and you know, since the first good Power Stone game was from a Cartoon Network show, maybe we'll strike gold again if we look at another iconic Cartoon Network series. Unfortunately, Powerpuff Girls Chemical Extraction is like the remake of the show. It's f***ing terrible. Powerpuff Girls Chemical Extraction, released in 2001 on both the PS1 and the N64. I'll be playing the PlayStation version. And you're not gonna like the developers and the publishers of this game. Developer-wise, this was VIS, who you might know as the people behind Earthworm Jim 3D on the N64, and also Asylum Entertainment as a secondary developer, who has their own IP known as Kid Ninja. Probably will do a video on that sometime in the future. And are also well known for other bad licensed games like Play with the Teletubbies, one of the worst PlayStation games of all time. Not to mention, the publisher is no walk in the park either, 
being BAM Entertainment, who is in charge of a lot of bad licensed games, and also reskins of Japanese games into licensed games. Since there is a lot of cartoon qualities within this game, such as the voice actors reprising their roles for the game, of course there will be also some story mode gameplay in it too. With the game beginning with the Powerpuff Girls making a pie only for the Townsville villains like Mojo Jojo, Princess, Sedusa, and the Gang Green Gang, stealing the pie, not knowing that Bubbles put Chemical X in the pie giving them powers on par with the girls. Bubbles, what were you thinking? That's a highly dangerous chemical you put inside a pie! Well anywho, it's up to you to choose one of the three Powerpuff Girls in order to take down your enemies. Though I do mention there is a story mode, it's only available in the PS1 version mostly because they couldn't fit the in-game cutscenes within the N64 cartridge due to cartridge limitations. Not like that it matters though, but it plays like Power Stone 1, with the 1v1 gameplay, the Chemical X instead of Power Stones, with characters getting unique attacks when you use all three. The CPUs at first start incredibly dumb, but the AIs get incredibly intelligent and start using all the items around you. Sometimes they'll even get an item far before you and they'll actually take you down really easy. So for the story mode, I obviously played as Bubbles and beat it to the end. After roughly less than an hour of gameplay, I was just like, is that the entire game? And I realized this is all the game is. You have to beat the campaign mode with all three Powerpuff Girls just to get the main ending. But I'll be real, I didn't want to play anymore. This game was just so bad, gameplay-wise, control-wise. Heck, I actually had a hard time trying to pick up items that were just right in front of me. Powerpuff Girls Chemical Extraction gives me a reaction because every time I'm playing it, I want to play something else. You know what, how about instead of American cartoon, Let's talk about a Japanese anime instead. And what better to talk about than the longest running franchise at the moment, One Piece. One Piece is like one of the biggest anime franchises at the moment, and right now it's entering its major final arc of the series. If you're a hardcore One Piece fan and you're trying to get into some good One Piece games, look no further than One Piece Grand Battle. Released on March 17th in 2005 on the US, I'll be playing the GameCube version for this type of video and published by Atari and Bandai, as when it comes to anime distribution, Atari had most of them until Bandai Namco became a thing. So what even is One Piece Grand Battle, you may be asking? Well, yet again, it's another Power Stone clone, playing more like Power Stone 1 as it's 1v1, but if you play the campaign mode, it actually does have recaps and or one-off stories involving characters within the One Piece series. Well, mostly during the East Blue to Alabasta arc. Let's address the elephant in the room right here now. This was actually during the time when 4Kids had the license to dub the anime. And yes, I know there was a lot of issues with the voice acting in the anime. I know there's a lot of editing issues with the anime. And what makes matters worse, the game starts off with the One Piece rap from the show. Yeah! And for those who don't know, this is actually an amalgamation of a Frankenstein monster of other One Piece Grand Battle games. More on that some other time because that deserves its own video on itself. But I'm not going to flat out lie and say, I think I had a really good time with this game. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite games. You get a good roster of characters within the One Piece series. You get some really cool arenas based off other popular moments from the series. Each character has a different handle and gameplay style, even unique dialogue. In fact, the game is so fun, I actually decided to check out the sequel. Released on August 29th, 2006. One Piece Grand Adventure. Then this time around is published by Bandai Namco Games back when the merger finally became a thing. But who's the developer, you're probably asking? Well, it's none other than a company known as Gambarion, who, in my general opinion, makes some of the best anime fighting games. If you look at their repertoire, there are a lot of really great titles, including Jump Superstars, Jump Ultimate Stars. Not to mention, Gambarion are also responsible for Pandora's Tower. Yes, that Pandora's Tower. So the developers of these games know what they're doing and how they're making this game fun even with a Frankenstein's monster game. And Grand Adventure is just more of what makes Grand Battle good, if not the best version, with more characters, more stages. There's also an assist summon system, where the first game only allowed you to get a specific character, but depending on special unlockable abilities, you can actually use any assist character for any situation whatsoever. And also probably one of the worst select stage song music I've ever heard. Not to mention, this is probably one of the more interesting facts about the game. 
back when 4Kids was dubbing One Piece, they ended it right before the Skypea arc, so we never really got to see what Skypea was like for the series. This is probably the first and only time we ever get to hear the English voice actor for Eneru, before eventually the license was obtained by Funimation and dubbed properly. Both Grand Battle and Grand Adventure are some of my favorite One Piece games. Not my all-time favorite, I'll probably do a video on that sometime in the future, but I highly recommend either One Piece Grand Battle or Grand Adventure. If you can tolerate the voice acting from 4Kids, there are tons of fun things to enjoy with friends on this game. Unfortunately, when it comes to the Power Stone clone games, I will regretfully say this is where the games peak, as a lot of the other ones I'll be talking about are extremely bad. Starting with Tom and Jerry, War of the Whiskers. Released on November 18th of 2002, developed and published by New Kid Co. Not to mention it was also developed by Viz Entertainment and Warner Brothers Interactive, and also it was published by Success and Ubisoft in other countries. If anyone happens to know who New Kid Co. is, I feel sorry for you. Or if you don't, they make some of the worst licensed games imaginable, and I've even looked at a few in the past. Now, what actually surprised me about War of the Whiskers was that this is technically a sequel to an N64 game known as Tom and Jerry Fists of Fury, with more stages and characters. I didn't know that when I first got the game, but if things go okay, I'll look at the first one sometime in the future. So, of course, like other Power Stone clothes, how does this one differ from the original? Of course, it's going to be only 1v1, which is ironic considering the only characters you can play as are either Tom or Jerry. And in order to unlock more characters, you have to beat the campaign. Basically, by beating up your foes, and if you actually hit them with a certain items, you can actually knock off some HP from them. Do enough damage and you can activate a rage meter, which temporarily makes you invulnerable, and allows you to do high damage. Unfortunately, one of the biggest problems with the game is, it is really bad. There are a lot of technical issues with the game. First off, the game is very slippery and finicky with its controls. You slide around literally everywhere, and every time you try to do an attack, you can't really do any combo damage, as you just hit the opponent, they hit you back, hit the opponent, hit you back, and sometimes they'll do a combo attack, which will allow them to knock you out. You easily slip on narrow platforms, and to make things worse, the game is incredibly brutal. No joke, when I actually played the first fight against Tom with Jerry, it took me 20 minutes just to beat the CPU. And you know the best way to win this game? Basically, you have to throw a lot of items all around the arena. The big problem is, the CPUs know that this is the best solution to win the game, and they'll try to beat you to all the different items you can throw around. But if you really want to win the game, make sure to find a weapon. Basically, frying pans, pitchforks, a blunt object that you can use to hit characters with. Because those do so much damage, and you can knock off HP from your opponents so easily. Not even the Rage Mode helps out in battle. There are just so many different problems with the game. There are just some arenas I just think are just terrible. Like one of the worst ones is this beach one where you can't even jump out of the water and sharks will attack you automatically taking your HP out. When you're about to ready to enter an arena, there's a loading screen to the title card, then there's a loading screen into the arena itself. But that might be because I am playing the PlayStation 2 version. And the icing on the cake. If you lose to anyone besides the first person you face in the game, you have to start from the very beginning. Tom and Jerry War of the Whiskers, or I'm now calling it War of the Wankers, is probably the most frustrating Power Stone clone. And to even make it even more crazy, this isn't the worst one on here, as we talk about one of the most infamous worst licensed games of all time, The Simpsons Wrestling. Released March 23rd in 2001 was The Simpsons Wrestling on PlayStation 2, and this is pretty infamous for a good reason. Developed by Big Ape Productions Incorporated, who also made Celebrity Deathmatch the game, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, and Hearst Adventure, the only good game they ever made, at least that's all I heard, and the publishers are EA, Activision, and Fox Interactive. I swear to God, this game is freaking cursed or something. And now I'm probably going to hear people in the comments saying, The Simpsons Wrestling isn't a Power Stone clone, it's more like a WWE game. A modern one, definitely. But it looks, it feels, and it plays like a Power Stone game. You're in a 3D based arena, you get some items to pick up and throw around, you get special moves. The only real difference is, is that you have a stamina meter for specific attacks, each of them using a certain amount, and even though when the opponent's HP bar goes down and completely, the only way to win this game is by pressing the L button, and then you have to wait for them to count to three, like a wrestling game. I have heard many negative things about this game, and I went in this game completely open-minded. So I was just dicking around with the game, and at first I thought it was having fun. But the fun ended when I realized all you really had to do just to really win the game was just press the X button over and over and over again until you knock them down and pin them. Doing this made me win 2 to nothing most matches. 
even with characters like Bumblebee Man, which I've actually heard a lot of the characters in this game are incredibly broken in some way or form. Though I never actually got to play Ned Flanders, who I've heard is one of the most broken video game characters of all time. But why has no one ever talked about Apu? He's also a little bit broken in this game as he actually has this one move where he just keeps attacking you over and over and over and over again, and you just get major chip damage over time. I mean, seriously, look at the damage he's doing. And of course, losing 2 nothing from Apu, I stopped playing the game altogether. The Simpsons Wrestling gets the reputation it deserves. Characters are poorly balanced, every stage looks the bloody same, and it's nothing more than mindless button mashing. Not making it just a bad Power Stone clone, but a terrible game in general. Thank you all for coming. I'll see you in hell. And you know what? I think it's about time we stop talking about the licensed games for now. So the last four games I'll be looking at are probably the most modern Power Stone clones I can find at the time. So where better to begin than something that I think a lot of people kind of forgot existed. You guys remember Combat Core? No? Just me? Well, let me just tell you. Combat Core released on Steam on August 18th of 2016 and was developed and published by MAB Man Z about fighters from across the galaxy having to gather to compete for the Combat Core League. And I'm not gonna lie, the character designs in this game look really good. Is it me, or does the main character, Bruiser, sound awfully familiar? I hope you're ready to lose. I told you I wasn't playing around. <laughs> eh, maybe it's just me. Now, this is actually gonna come across as a crazy concept for all of you listening here. Combat Core is an extremely customizable Power Stone. No, seriously, there's a huge variety of customization you can do with this game. Not just color palettes, you can also change the character's super moves depending on the type of stone there is. There's also VR gameplay, though I'd never really tried it, don't have a VR headset. But one of the coolest things is character customization. It is crazy how you can customize these characters in any way or form, such as this abomination I made. And I'm going to take a wild guess that Madman Z is a pretty big fan of Dragon Ball. Though most of the roster is incredibly original, one of the two characters is Zeto and Kizuna from this reign of magical expertise, or Tome for short. Combat Core is a pretty fun time. Though the level design looks like I'm playtesting the beta, the gameplay, the fun character design, the massive customization to the game makes it quite the must play. It even has online play, though the rooms are barren right now. So now might be the best time to see if you could be the best at Combat Core. I think the game is incredibly fun, so maybe give it a chance yourself. What's next? Power Stone with cats in it? Oh right. This game is called Fist of Fluffs. Released in September 23 of 2020, developed by Playfellow Studio, an indie company, and published by Rogue Games Inc., an indie publisher. The game itself, I will admit, doesn't have a lot going for it. Not to say that the game itself is bad, but there's only currently three game modes and a party mode where it just switches between the three modes, which I'm going to call the three following modes. Free for all, where the last one standing wins with 2 HP. King mode, where you're keeping a crown on your cat for the longest time. And cat lateral damage, no not that game, where you have to do as much property damage as you can to win. So yeah, it's Power Stone, but with cats. You can also get tons of achievements and unlock new types of materials from unlock new cats. Though the gameplay has multiplayer chaos similar to Power Stone, just, you know, with cats, I'll generally say it doesn't have the cleanest gameplay with the cat physics stretching out and the AI being dumb. Not to mention it has very little music in the game. But at least the menu can change from calming atmosphere to... The game says there are plans for online play in the future, but since the game's been out for already two and a half years, it's unsure whether or not it'll ever be released, but Playfellow is still dedicated to the development of the game. It's going to be more of when it comes out. Also, you can customize your own cat. I made one based off my own little kitty, Kalaleo. Fist of Loves isn't a bad game, but it's still missing something to really make it a more entertaining 3D arena fighter like Power Stone. I'd only recommend it if you want to get a few chuckles out of it or get a few cat-loving friends over to simply have a fun time. I'm going to lose a lot of credibility for what I'm about to say about this next game, because it plays like a 3D Smash Brothers game. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Smash Legends, released on March 15th of 2021 and developed and published by 5 Minute Lab. Now when people say this is a 3D Smash Brothers, I don't want Power Stone to be the comparison, I want Smash Legends to be the comparison. 
because that's what this game is, 3D Smash Brothers. You're basically doing high damaging attack moves to knock out your opponents off the platform. There are also a variety of game modes at your disposal. Not to mention, the game itself has lore for some reason, as this takes place in the library world, full of different types of fairy tale stories. But a big tournament is held known as Smash Legends, where the best fighter gets their wish come true. A lot of the characters you see that are playable are basically futuristic versions of fairy tale characters. Personally myself, I like playing as Peter Pan. When starting the game, you actually are automatically thrown into a tutorial, but unfortunately if you do play it on Steam, it is keyboard exclusive. Once when you actually get into the game, you can actually use a controller. But if you want to know the controls, good luck on that. The gameplay has a really simple button layout with standard attack, a special move, and a super move. Not to mention when you use your attack button, you can also pick up items, just like in, well, Smash Brothers. But why a simple button layout? Well, that's because this is also a mobile game. And since it's a mobile game, that means this game is completely free, sort of. Yes, you can download this game right now on your phone and play with it. You can also connect the game to your Steam account and have crossplay. Unfortunately, this has one of my biggest problems with the game itself, the in-game currency and the seasonal battle passes. You can unlock characters using in-game currency, and you do get two free playable characters at your roster, not to mention a free character rotation, and they let you try out the characters before you buy them. But of course, trying to unlock those characters is a bit of the grind. I actually did play this originally back in 2022, but when making this video, I decided to play it recently after having a recent major update to the game. They actually did solve some issues, but unfortunately not all of them, as there's like a three rank battle pass, which, you know, costs a lot of money. I think the gameplay is really good. I really like the character designs. And it's another game I actually had a really good time playing. I think there's like a good dedicated fan base to this title. I'll be honest when I say I think the battle pass thing is getting really tiring now. I'm not gonna say the game is bad. Smash Legends, I think, is a pretty enjoyable game for what it is. Plus, it's still one of those games you can still enjoy and not pay a dime for. There are no restrictions on how many times you can play against opponents, though there are some perks that are behind a paywall, unfortunately. I think the game is still enjoyable for what it is, a fun time to play with friends, and it's probably the only Power Stone clone I can find with a decent online community. So if you find any interest in trying the game out, give it a shot. But if you spend money on the game, that's entirely your fault. We're now finally at the last game of this video. And obviously, if you're a Power Stone enthusiast like myself, it makes sense that I finally talk about Mighty Fight Federation. Released on February 7th in 2020, developed and published by Komi Games, with its secondary publisher being Forthright Entertainment. You know, I think it's thanks to this game that Komi Games Incorporated has actually done a really good job with themselves, working with Platonic, SNK, and of course, Double Fine. With the Mighty Fight Federation being a tournament featuring the best of the best from all around the universe. And you can definitely see that with its third-party characters' inclusions, including Toe Jam and Earl, Ukulele, Miriam from Bloodstains, and the only DLC character worth money, Kunio and Ricky. While the rest of the cast is actually original characters, from what I can think of, the gameplay in this has a really good competitive scene, with projectile attacks, dashing, super moves that can only use once per stock. I only have two major problems with this game, however. And the first problem you can easily see within the art style, which I think is just borderline ugly. The characters made in this game just look really, really gross in some way or form. The only exceptions in my general opinion are some of the third party characters like Toe Jam and Earl, Ukulele and Miriam, mostly because I feel like they just use the assets from those games and just put them into the game. And my other problem with the game is the AI. I'm not joking when I say when I try out the campaign mode on normal difficulty, I got my butt whooped. So when I turned it down to the easiest difficulty possible, I still lost. The bots will use every trick in the book in this game and utterly destroy you. I mean, yeah, it's probably just me not being really good at competitive fighting games. I mean, I still don't know how to do a proper Hadouken in Super Smash Brothers. That's more of a me problem. But Mighty Fight Federation is definitely more built for competitive gaming, not casual gameplay. It's still enjoyable for what it tries to do, but some people will drop it if they just can't get good. And with that, that is every Power Stone clone I can currently find at the moment. Before we continue this video, here's how I'd rank these Power Stones clones on whether you should play them or not. Obviously, I highly recommend One Piece Grand Battle and Grand Adventure, 
They are some of the best Power Stone clones. Followed by Combat Core with the amount of customization it has, and its gameplay is actually really fun. Followed by The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy for its chaotic gameplay. Smash Legend, just to try it out if you see if you like it. Followed by Mighty Fight Federation, as I'm not really a heavy competitive gamer, so it's just more of a not me thing. Followed by Fist of Fluffs, which is just a silly fun time. And the rest of the games, just trash them. They are just awful. But you know, looking at all these games made me realize something. Even though it may look like we may never get a new Power Stone by Capcom, that doesn't mean other companies haven't tried to recapture what made Power Stone such an enjoyable game. Whether it be a licensed title or an indie title, there will always be someone out there making a Power Stone inspired game until one day we get that long awaited Power Stone 3 we rightfully deserve. Also a bit of a rant here, why did they put Power Stone Collection on the PSP? Makes no sense.